even though the Suron is one of the most fun, durable and versatile bikes on the market right now, it doesn't come without its problems and general wear and tear. That's why in this video I'm going to run over 5 common problems with the Suron Lite BX and how we can fix them. Let's get into it. The first problem that I want to address with the Suron, and it's quite a common problem, is the belt. Over time while riding, the belt's going to pick up dirt and debris, and very commonly, the belt will pick up a bit of a squealing sound. This is a really common problem with the Suron, and while it doesn't affect how the bike actually rides, it's just really annoying to hear the noise coming from the belt. While I haven't found a full-time solution to this problem, I have found a temporary solution that seems to work, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. First things first, we're going to want to start by taking off the belt cover. This is held in by two 4mm Allen key bolts, which you'll see here. Once they're removed, you can then remove the belt cover. It might be a bit tricky to manoeuvre out, but it will come out. Once you've removed the belt cover, it's always a good idea to look over the belt and make sure that there is no damage to the belt itself. Once you're happy with how the belt is looking, it's time to fix the squeaking problem. So personally, I've got a little trick that I use. So normally for this, I like to use silicon shine. However, I've actually run out of silicon shine, so we're going to have to use bike protect instead. For a start, we're going to shake the can of bike protect to make sure it's all mixed up. Once you've done this, you're going to want to spin the back wheel so the belt is moving and then spray the belt with the bike protect. Once you're happy that you've sprayed enough of the bike protect onto the belt, make sure you go around and clean up any excess that you might have sprayed around the motor. So normally at this point, I'd be telling you to clean the original belt cover of all the dirt and debris that is in the back. However, I won't be doing this today because I've kindly been sent a custom belt cover by eBikes Part Shop. This is a 3D printed belt cover specifically designed for me, as you can see with the MFO on the belt cover for Matt Francis Official. And it's coming in the black and orange colours to match the black and orange on the bike. Not to mention how clean the MFO is looking on the belt cover itself. If you are looking for any custom made parts for your Telaria or for your Suron, then make sure you go in and check in out eBikes Part Shop. He's got a range of different products for both bikes, which he has been designing and producing over the past couple of months a lot of the parts are coming so clean and if you get in touch with him i'm sure he'll help you pick a design for your bike the link to e-bike part shop will be down below in the description of the video so make sure you're going down there and checking out some of the things he's got to offer but for now let's get this custom belt cover on the bike One of the next most common problems on the Suron is going to be the headset. Over time while riding the Suron and cleaning the Suron, you're going to be driving water into the headset, slowly pushing the grease out of the headset bearings. From factory, these bikes do not come well greased at all. It's definitely a good idea early on to re-grease your headset bearings. Before you start, a little tip that I had to learn the hard way is definitely try and remove your front wheel when doing this. It'll make the process so much easier. You haven't got the weight of the front wheel pulling the forks down once you start removing things to get to the headset. So to do this, you're going to want to undo the bolt on top of the stem on the bike, which goes down to a starnet in the forks. If you're like me and you've got a stem on your handlebars instead of a direct mount, you're going to want to undo the two bolts in the stem. That will then free up the stem. And once the top cap has been removed, you can then pull the stem up and the handlebars will come off the bike. Just be careful when hanging the handlebars down because of all the cables you've still got on your handlebars. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and undo the three bolts that hold the top crown onto the forks and that can also be removed. Once you've loosened and removed the top crown from the bike, the forks should then be free and you'll be able to remove them from the bike. Once they're removed, you can start taking the bearings out of the headset cups. The bottom bearing will still be attached to the forks, but this isn't a problem. So as you can see from these clips here, my headset wasn't very well greased at all. Rather than grease around the bearings, it was more like muddy water surrounding the bearings, and the bearings were absolutely covered in sludge and grit. Once you've removed the forks and the bearings, you're going to want to start by cleaning the bearings and cleaning the cups which the bearings sit in, so there isn't any grease, debris, or grit hanging around in your headset bearings or the cups when you come to put it all back together. Once these have been cleaned and you've inspected the bearings and everything is working to a satisfactory level you're going to want to go ahead get some grease 
and grease them all up. The best way possible of doing this is covering the headset bearings themselves in grease and then also packing the headset cups with grease as well so once the bearings are sat back in they'll be surrounded by grease. Once you're satisfied that everything has now been greased up to the appropriate amount you're going to want to go ahead and start putting things back. This is where taking the front wheel off comes in very handy because you'll be able to lift the forks up and actually maneuver the forks around rather than having all that weight of the front wheel pulling the forks down constantly while you're trying to put them back on the bike. One of the other problems you might experience while riding the Suron, especially with the stock forks like I'm riding, is that over time they actually leak a small amount of air. This will make the forks feel really spongy, too soft, and they won't absorb the pressure of any of the bumps like they normally should. So the chances are that your forks need more air pumping into them. This is a really easy job to keep on top of, let's have a look at how you do it. On the KKE suspension which came standard on my Suron, on the right hand side, right at the bottom, you will find a valve which has got a cap on it. This valve is where you will pump more air into the suspension. To put more air in the forks, you are going to need a shock pump which is specifically made for suspension. To do this, you're going to want to unscrew the cap from the bottom of the valve. Once the cap has been unscrewed, you can then screw on your shock pump. On the shock pump, you will find a PSI reader which will tell you how many PSI you have got in your forks. Mine is actually reading around 100 PSI which isn't bad but I like to run 150 PSI in my forks. After doing some research online on how much air you should be putting in these forks I found that people say between 100 and 150 PSI is the best. I personally like to go for 150 PSI so I know there's plenty of air in them. As they do leak over time it means there is a bit of room for error so say I didn't pump them up for two or three weeks there's still plenty of air in the forks that I can use. Once you've attached the shock pump and you've read your PSI reader if necessary you're going to want to pump more air into the forks to get to your desired PSI level. Once you're at your desired PSI level you unscrew the shock pump and then you can go ahead and screw the cap back on the forks. Once you've done that you can go back, check your forks, make sure that they're working all right. If you have been running under pressure this should make your forks feel so much better. It's a really simple job, it's really easy to keep on top of and is a massive game changer when you do this especially if your forks are leaking air like mine. So now we've sorted the forks out, we've put the desired PSI level in them, they're feeling so much better. We're going to look at the next problem that people tend to have on the Surons and that's going to be with the jack shaft. So one of the things I've noticed with the jack shaft on the Suron is after time, especially after pressure washing the bike, it's going to need lubing up. It'll be an absolute nightmare to take the bike apart every few rides just to grease up these bearings inside the jack shaft. So what I like to do personally is get some white lithium grease from WD-40 and then use this to spray into the jack shaft trying to get as much lubricant on the bearings on the jack shaft as we can as possible. Using the white lithium grease should get rid of any unwanted noises, sounds, clicking, anything like that from the jack shaft bearings. If your bearings are gone there is no bringing them back, there is no saving them. You are going to have to upgrade them if your bearings are knackered. But to prolong your bearings as much as possible, it's a great idea to spray some white lithium grease in them, keep them greased up, keep them moving freely, and you will definitely notice the difference. I was having a problem with my jack shaft where it was just lumpy, really rough, didn't sound quite right, sounded really loud. As soon as I sprayed some of this stuff in it, wiped it down and let it sit on the bearings for a period of time. It made the bearings a lot smoother and it made the bike feel like new again. It really was a game changer using this, so let's have a look how I do it. So what I like to do to grease the jack shaft bearings is turn the bike on so we can use the throttle to spin the jack shaft. When the bike is on, you want to use the throttle to spin the wheel, but only at a slow pace. When you got it spinning, I like to get the white lithium grease and just spray it into the bearings, trying to drive as much grease into the jack shaft bearings as possible. Once you're happy with the amount of grease that you sprayed on the jack shaft bearings, you will then need to get a rag and wipe off any excess. The excess I shouldn't damage anything on the bike it just looks a lot neater to wipe it down once you're happy that you've done this on one side you can then move around the other side and repeat the process so that's the jack shaft bearings greased up as easy as that it's a really quick five minute job doesn't take a lot of time at all and it really will change how your bike feels when riding it this is something you will have to repeat every few rides ideally five to ten rides especially if you're pressure washing the bike and driving water into those bearings but like i said it's such a quick and easy job that it's no problem to do this every few rides and it really will make your bike feel as smooth as it needs to be now the bike's all greased up let's move on to the last common problem on the Suron. So moving on to the final problem that you might have with your Suron and this isn't just for Suron specifically this is for any bike that's going to have a chain drive in it. Even on a push bike over time you're going to have to give some attention to the chain. The thing is with the chain over time it will start to stretch and become loose on the bike. Mine right now isn't exactly dangerously loose but it's definitely not tight so we're going to have a look at how you can tighten the chain. So for a start some of the tools you're going to need is a 6mm allen key, a 17mm spanner and two 10mm spanners. At the rear of the bike where the rear axle goes through the wheel you will notice these blocks these are called chain tension blocks front of these blocks you've got a 10 millimeter bolt and a 10 millimeter nut these are used to get the correct tension on your chain by moving them forwards and backwards this is helped by two notches cut out of the tension block then you've got notches on the frame to help you find out how far back you've come and to keep the back wheel straight so to get started to make sure your chain is at the right tension you want to first start by undoing the rear axle bolt 
This is where you'll use the 6mm Allen key and the 17mm spanner to undo the rear axle. You don't want it taken out all the way, you just want it loosened off. Once the rear axle is loose, you can then move to the nuts which are at the front of the bolts on the tension blocks. You want to undo these nuts slightly so you have the freedom to move the bolts in and out depending on whether you need your chain tightened or loosened. So for my chain, because I need to get it tighter, I need to undo these bolts so they're pushing the wheel back further. You want to try and undo these bolts equally either side whilst checking the tension of your chain making sure that you're not going too tight. Whilst getting the chain to the correct tension, you want to be going to either side of the bike and counting how many notches line up with the notch on the tension block. If you've got the cutouts on the tension block lined up at the same amount of notches either side of the bike then you know that the wheel is straight and in line. Once you're happy with your chain tension and that the wheel is still in line you can go ahead and tighten the front nuts on those tension block bolts. Once you've got them tightened back up you can then go ahead and tighten the rear axle again. Once you've tightened the rear axle, you want to go to the chain and check the tension again. The reason for this is, when you do up the rear axle, it might have changed the tension in the chain, making it tighter than it needs to be. If this is the case, then go back and repeat the process, make the chain a little bit looser than it needs to be, so when you tighten up the rear axle and it tightens up, then it's at the perfect tension. Now the chain's at the correct tension and everything has been tightened up at the back of the bike, it's always a good idea to go ahead and lube your chain afterwards. This is something that should be done regularly anyway to keep your chain at the best possible health. Lubing the chain up properly will keep the chain running healthier, smoother and quieter. You'll definitely notice a difference when keeping on top of these things. Just before we end this video, I want to give a massive big up and a massive thank you to eBike Part Shop again for sorting out the belt cover. The belt cover is looking spot on on the bike and has added my own personalization again to the Seron. The links to his Instagram and his website will be down below in the description of the video if you want to go and have a look at any 3D printed Telaria or Seron parts. With all that said and done, that concludes my video on common problems that I tend to have with my Seron and how to fix them. Like mentioned, some of the solutions weren't permanent solutions. These are things that you're going to have to repeat, but that is just the nature of owning and riding a bike like this. There's always something to do on it to keep it maintained. If you found this video useful and you've learned something new or there's any problems you want me to touch on on the future on the Seron then please let me know in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel and you like this sort of content go ahead and hit that subscribe button. There's plenty more to come and you definitely don't want to miss what we've got lined up. With all that said and done I'm going to go ride the Seron before it gets dark. I've been Matt Francis signing out. Peace.